What is up guys, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to look at how the game is changing and who will be the strongest champions moving into 7.3. There are some pretty big nerfs actually coming which make others a lot better, so this should be pretty interesting. Now before we start, a couple of weeks ago we did a video with the app Lol Sumo, and the feedback was so good we're going to take another look at it today. A lot of you were trying the new champions from this video last time actually, and you could use the app to find out what you should build for the exact matchup and a game you're in. I'm a big fan of it personally because it generates a tailored made build for that game and shows you stuff which is really hard to find like which order you should get item components in and even what time in the game most people get them having that time to kind of aim for is actually really useful the app is free as well you can follow pros and see what they build on there you can even look back at your games and see how you're doing compared to everyone else who plays that champion in the game the premium version has even more analysis stuff in there it's like lane specific champion gameplay stats for you to look at to show you which you need to work on to be better than those around you and gives you stuff to focus on improving if you have not tried it already then a link is down below Give it a go and let me know what you think. It takes two seconds to download, so it's worth a try. Every time we get a sponsor on the channel, you guys know I want to say thank you to you. So this is last video's winner of the RP, and I'm giving away another $25 of RP. So just leave a comment and like the video if you do to enter to win it. So we're going to start the video by looking at the jungle. Though timestamps are going to be down in the description if you want to skip to another role. There are going to be quite a few nerfs, though, which are really going to shake things up. We're seeing probably the two strongest jungle champions right now getting nerfed. So Rengar's the first one. His Q dash range is lowered by 50 units, so you won't dash as far. Your W has been changed, so if you use it with Ferocity, it's not going to prevent crowd control anymore, which is massive. Now, we'll still remove existing crowd control, but if you're hit by anything afterwards, it will now work on you. It will still lock you down. The R duration has also been lowered to 12 to 20 seconds from 14 to 30, so you'll feel that a little bit later into the game. Now, there is actually another thing which I think most people have missed because it's not in any patch notes or anything. It's not actually coming into the game just yet. It's going to be in the future. They're testing another change or nerf to Rengar and removing Moving the guaranteed crit you get if you leap to the closest target that has the mark above their head. This, in my opinion, if they did it, would be massive, but they have said they're testing a sort of replacement if they do do it. So instead of a crit, if you leap to the closest target, you're going to generate full ferocity after casting his next empowered ability. What this actually means is if you use an empowered ability, you're going to be able to use another empowered ability straight away afterwards. So you could use your Q as you land empowered, then empowered Q straight away again. You could root someone twice, you could root them with the net, and then use an empowered Q for damage straight afterwards. That would be a pretty sick change, I think, actually, if it happened, but that's still being tested right now. The stuff we're going to see changing right now is the Q shorter range, W won't prevent crowd control, and the R duration is down. The CC prevention is definitely the big thing. It's going to make his team fight a lot worse, but you got to remember, none of his damage values are being touched this patch. He can still easily one-shot people. He might just not be able to run away afterwards and actually survive. So at least team fighting versus Rengar will be a bit easier now, but he's still going to blow your head off. The next one is to Kha'Zix. So the key bonus AD ratio is down to 120% from 140%. And if you evolve your Q, the cooldown refund is to 45% from 60%. I think this is going to be a pretty decent hit to his 1v1 potential, especially a bit later into the game. He's still going to do a lot of damage though, so I won't completely take him out of the meta or anything like that. This might be one of those nerfs where Kha'Zix mains are actually kind of happy in a weird way. He's weaker, but it means everyone will stop banning him so you can actually play him some more. So if you haven't watched one of these videos before, we look at a key few changes happening, but it's more about what that means for the game, right? Like, I think that's something a lot of videos and sites don't really show you with these changes. Savai is the first one, probably going to be the most reliable jungler in 7.3, in my opinion now. She is decent versus Rengar and Kha'Zix, and now she's even better. Especially Rengar, actually, when he jumps in, you can press R, and he won't be immune to crowd control anymore. You can actually lock him down, and that's actually huge. Hecarim will also be a bit better. He's a little bit sleeper this patch, I think, with all the lethality changes, but he's one of the best non-lethality tanky junglers you can play at the moment. He's really, really good still. Shaco, Shaco, whatever with the lethality stuff will also most likely become the top lethality jungler after Rengar and Kha'Zix get pushed down a bit. Nocturne might also become a bit more popular. Basically right now he's a worse version of Rengar I think but if Rengar gets worse he naturally gets a bit better. Before we move on to the next role very quickly just to say these supersized Cho'Gath buffs have disappeared for now on the PBE. The right have said they just aren't ready for a release yet and will most likely be sticking around in a future patch. So we're actually going to look at support next. There are two nerfs which are really big that most people have kind of missed. Zara is the first one. Her plants are no longer going to auto-target nearby enemy champions, which is huge. They're only going to target champions if they have just been hit by a Zyra spell. So basically, if you use your Q in lane and spawn plants, but you don't actually hit the champion with the Q, plants will hit whatever is closest, most likely minions now, instead of champions. You're going to have to make sure that your Q, your E, or whatever, hits the enemy champion if you want your plants to target them before they would if a champion was about 350 range away, which isn't exactly a tiny radius either. The mana cost of your Q is actually going up 10 to 17 mana right now as well. 
well. And these are actually really big changes in my opinion. Zara is really hard to play against and that's one of her biggest things, right? She puts the enemy AD behind by having a huge amount of damage and basically 1v2ing the lane. Now, if you can actually dodge that Q, which has a cast time, it's not that hard to dodge it, then plants are not going to ruin you afterwards. That was honestly one of the most annoying things ever. You dodge the spell, but plants still wreck you anyway. For a good Zara player who does hit spells, it doesn't really matter as much, but overall, I think it's a pretty big nerf, even if it doesn't look like it. So Mel's Heart is the other one, and these look like small changes, but I think it's going to change a lot. His W Voidings are going to spawn after a short delay instead of instantly, and they're going to gradually slow down based off the distance they are away from Mel, so they can't just run people down as much. This Voiding is not spawning instantly changes actually really big in my opinion. Mauser High has a ton of damage and crowd control which makes him a pain in the ass to play against but he could also shut down completely some champions with that Voidling spawn which most didn't realize. Like Lee Sin Q for example could be instantly blocked by a Voidling. At least Cocoon could be blocked. Blitzcrank Hook. Thresh Hook. I'm 99% sure as well that you could use this in front of a Varus Arrow or a Kaelin Q to absorb the main part of the damage because it does reduce the targets after the first. All of these skill shots could be blocked by a Voidling and it was an instant cast. Mauser High could deliberately use that to block this crowd control it was ridiculous. As long as the mouse was paying attention, he could completely shut down that champion. Really, like a blitzcrank should never be able to land a hook in that lane. Basically, my point is, even though this change seems small, I actually think it might have a bigger impact on his win rate overall. Blitzcrank should become even better for solo queue now. He's a little unrated at the moment. He's not really talked about very much, but he's one of the highest win rates now for supports. Soraka and Janna will still be very good as defensive supports, and Lulu will be better. She won't get abused by Zyra as much. She's already very strong so watch out for more lulu this patch in my opinion it also means more auto attack base ad carries will be better now that mouse heart and zara can't solo kill them as easily vayne might see a little bit of a rise up this patch with lulu especially if she's not getting abused as much varus will probably be even better than he already is right now twitch will also likely see another rise in play partly when people realize he's still very good and partly because zara doesn't bend him over as much in the lane phase apart from that ad will basically stay the same not much changes this patch for us except because of supports. So mid is only getting one change, maybe two I guess if we count Jason here as well, but the one is going to be full of blonde. It is a nerf but it's also kind of a tweak, so the passive damage is down early but basically the same later into the game, it actually ends a bit higher. The idea is to keep the same rough damage but slow her curve down so make her a little bit weaker in the lane phase. From level 1 to 8 it's going to be 20 plus 10 instead of 25 plus 15, so actually quite a big difference. After level 8 you gain 20 per level instead of the 15 before, so it's designed to catch back up with the old values. We're going to have to see what this is really like, but like level 5 now will be 70 damage instead of 100. Level 10 would be 140 damage instead of 175. I'm not sure 30, 35 damage is going to be a complete game changer considering you only really proc that passive once, maybe twice in a fight, though 60 damage actually less is a bit of a chunk. So if LeBlanc is more manageable in the lane phase though, it will make more passive mages a lot better, especially poke champions. This might be the patch where poke becomes better. It's weak to assassins and burst damage, like they get burst before they can poke and do any damage. But what this means is a Xerath, a Ziggs, a Lux maybe might actually be able to do a little bit more now and survive that lane. And if they reach mid game, they're actually set up well to deal with her. They poke her out of range and get her too low to dive in. In my opinion, I reckon we're going to see a rise in Xerath, Ziggs play mid lane especially, probably Velkos and Lux as well. With Rengar and Kha'Zix a bit less deadly or a bit less popular at least, these will be even better now and you can farm more safely to a few items and to team fights where you group. I definitely keep an eye on Velkos though and Nivea this patch as well actually. Nivea is a solid counter to assassins. You have to kill her twice with her egg, right? Naturally, with loads of assassins around, she's good this patch, even though people haven't really caught on to her as much yet. So let's finally look at the top lane then. The first one is going to be Jace. He could fit into the mid lane section, I guess, as well, but it's mostly top lane. So his Q hammer damage has been reduced by 5 rank 1 and 30 rank 5. The transform into hammer as well, the bonus AD is down to 25% from 40%, and also the E hammer mana cost is up to 55 from 40. So it doesn't take a genius to work out that going after his burst in hammer form, and especially later into the game. The Q damage, by the way, when you slap someone with that hammer, you dunk them or whatever, considering you max it first, it isn't even late game. Level 9 onwards, you're going to be missing that extra damage. The ratio, though, on the hammer swap is something that gets worse the more items you get, though. So is it really going to kill Jace? Probably not, honestly, but it will stop you being as abusive with the newly Thadzi build, and I reckon you can still abuse it, but it won't be as face roll as it has been this patch. The other change is to Camille. So the Q second hit bonus damage is down to 80% from 100%, and also the W slow is 80% from 90%. The E mana cost is up to 70 from 50, so actually a 20 increase, which is pretty big. The stun duration is 0.75 from one second, and you only get attack speed now if you hit a champion. I would still ban her, honestly. Let's just get that out of the way, right? This doesn't really do enough, in my opinion. You know how, like, Callista, Azir are either broken or trash, right? Like, they don't really fit into the game that well because their kits are just.
just overloaded. They're way too good at everything they do. I think Camille fits into the same category of things. She has a lot of damage, control, defense, outplay potential, and mobility. So the issue is she doesn't really compromise on anything to have all of that. Like, I don't see an obvious downside or an area to exploit. At least in terms of top lane, right? In general, though, Fiora will creep further to the top of the carry rankings, in my opinion. Quinn and Wukong are still pretty sleeper, like underrated, strong, just because of the new lethality changes. Swain is a massive monster. He is a beast right now. Nautilus is going to be the best tank. Malphite is going to be a bit better with all these lethality AD assassins around because he builds so much armor, they can't get through him and they can't kill him. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a look at 7.3 and really what these changes are going to mean. That is what I focus this video on. Subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Thank you for watching. But for now, let's go to the robots.